Hi there. So every now and then people ask if it's possible to upgrade the memory on their video cards. And while there is not a one fits all solution to that question, in short, it might be possible. And to prove that, I will upgrade my RX 480 4GB to 8GB. Now on earlier production runs of these cards, it was possible to soft mod them. That means um, you have to flash the 8GB um, BIOS of, uh, on the 4GB card. However, in this case, this is not possible. The memory chips on these cards are really 4GB and not 8GB. That means we have to change the memory modules from this card to this card. In this instance, these are the same card apart from the memory. However, that is not strictly needed, but we will come to this later on. Disclaimer, this is not a beginner's project. Video cards are actually quite hard to work on, and unless you are already confident in micro-soldering, please don't try this. Also, I'm neither an electronics nor software engineer, so please do your own research beforehand. Furthermore, I'm doing this on a minimal viable setup, so I would not necessarily recommend you doing this the same way. With all that said, let's get started. So to start, the card you see running here is the Sapphire RX 480 that you saw earlier. It is still untouched and runs just fine. But let's talk about what cards can and cannot be upgraded. Firstly, there are false friends. For example, the GTX 1060. This card comes in a 3 and 6 GB variant. While they are named both the same, they are not really the same specs wise. So even if it would be possible to upgrade the smaller card, it would still be inferior to the bigger 6 GB model. Next, then, th you need to ask the question, is there a bigger skew of the card in question? So if not, things get a lot more complicated, but not necessarily impossible as the Russian YouTuber Vic On proved by upgrading the memory on 20 and 30 series NVIDIA cards. This approach is a lot harder, as on top of all the steps required in this video, you also need to mod the BIOS and possibly the drivers. So, while I'm disassembling the card, let's talk about what are good cards for such an upgrade. For example, the AMD RX 400 and 500 series are well suited to this. To my knowledge, there are 4 and 8 GB SKUs to every model, maybe excluding the RX 590, 590. I haven't checked that, but um, probably not that one. But all the other ones, they are 4 and 8 GB um, SKUs out there. So this means the memory controller itself is capable of handling um, 8 GB memory um, when you start from 4. But what this also means you probably don't need to modify the BIOS as you can use the one from the larger SKU. Generally speaking you can only upgrade by multiples of 2 and 3 so or starting from the initial size so if you have a 2 GB version you can upgrade to uh, 4 or if you have a 4 GB version you can upgrade to 8, 3 to 6 and so on but you cannot do like um, start from 4 GB and upgrade to 6 GB this won't be possible as well as starting from 8 to 16 GB so we, there is no 16 GB RX 480 out there and you it, it will be very 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 difficult to do that that being said um, there are probably more cards out there where this upgrade would be possible um, yeah you have to do your own research on that one I went to the Tech Power Up BIOS collection and um, searched for the models of the RX 480 from Sapphire, as you can see here. And these are the two models um, that we will be using. Um, for the 4 GB version, um, you can find the supported memory here. In this case, it's Alpida and Hynix memory. And we, our card has, or the, the working card has um, LPDA memory on it. And with the 8GB BIOS version, the supported memory is Samsung and Micron. 
on the donor card um, is this Samsung K4G something something and we will be using that. However, if you cannot find a suitable donor card, you can also buy the memory chips themselves. If you do that, you first might want to research if one or the other performs a little bit better, if you are into overclocking. Um, f f I just looked up the Samsung memory on AliExpress and you need eight of them so they come around to 120 bucks before shipping and taxes and everything so this is probably the more expensive solution of the um, or it's more expensive than buying a broken card on ebay or whatever however you save time with reballings another issue with that is you don't know what you get so I'm not saying that this store in particular does something nasty, but it's probably not new memory. It's pulled from broken cards as well and reballed, and you just don't know what you get. If you can find it on a, a reputable site like Mouse or DigiKey, uh, whatever, um, I will probably go that route, even if it's a little bit more expensive, since you can be quite certain that it will be new, non-fake, yeah, usable memory. You have to keep in mind, none of the vendors give you a warranty. So if they sell you broken stuff, you're, um, yeah, bad luck. Or good luck trying to get your money back, you won't. So to the actual work on the cards. I don't want to make a micro soldering tutorial out of this video. Therefore, I will time-lapse through the whole process, giving you only very basic commentary. If you want a more detailed explanation, let me know, maybe I will make another video, or there are many tutorials online. Right now you can see me removing um, the memory that we are going to use, this is the 8GB donor card, and we have to first remove these memory chips. Now that the mem donor memory chips are removed, we need to clean and reball them. Basically there are receiving pads on the GPU and there are pads on the chip itself. We need to connect those pads accordingly. To do that there are solder balls making the contact between the two pads. These solder balls are 0.45mm in diameter and there are a lot of them. <laughs> so there is a stencil to make our life a little bit easier which is basically the negative of the pads on the memory chip. And all the holes need to be filled with one solder ball and then we melt the solder balls to the chip. After that I remove the stencil from the chip and reflow them again. This is to perfectly align all of the balls on the, uh, on the pads. I check this under the microscope to ensure everything is fine. For all memory modules this took me roughly two and a half hours.
So you can see me here to um, removing the old uh, 4 GB memory modules from our card. It's pretty much the same as with the donor card except I put Kapton tape on some sensible components in order to protect them. Kapton tape is just heat resistant tape and it will protect stuff like uh, electrolytics and plastic connectors and the GPU itself from the um, hot air soldering station. After all the chips are removed I have to clean up the pads. Um, firstly to remove the unleaded solder and replace it with um, leaded solder but also to remove some of the solder bridges that, are that occurred um, when removing the old chips. And lastly I clean the surface of the PCB with IPA in order to remove all the used up flux and residues. There is only one thing left that I want to do before starting with the, with the transplantation. And that is to solder a wire to the coil of the output of the memory rail. This is to check for shorts to ground while soldering. While this is not a foolproof method to check if everything is all, fa is all good and all the, the solder balls make perfect connection, it is a good way to see if some, something is terribly wrong, say a short to ground. With a cold GPU I would expect the Samsung memory rail to be something in the neighborhood of 20 ohms to gr resistance to ground and while the card is hot when soldering I'm happy with any value bigger than say 2 to 5 ohms. Now everything is ready to transplant the new memory chips onto the PCB. So finally to the most important part of the job, soldering the memory back in. Now the chips need to be aligned properly and that means A the dots on the chip itself needs to be aligned in the same corner with the um, white triangle on the PCB and B the row needs to need to match up. It is it's not that important if, if it's a little bit crooked or a little bit off but it needs to roughly match up and the perfect alignment is done by the surface tension of the molten, molten solder so it will self align but it can self align a row off and that would not be good. After each module I check the resistance to ground just to make sure I don't produce a short.
Now all that's left is um, to clean the card a bit more up and remove the wire from the memory VRM. And as you can see, the the resistance to ground is still rising. Right now it's about 14 ohms and it should rise up to around 20 ohms when the card is fully cooled down. After that I will partly reassemble the card, I will only mount the cooler just to test it if it works. If it does work then later on I will uh, correctly assemble the card. And now to testing. Um, will it post? We will try. Um, the excruciating long wait for the motherboard to post. Still waiting. And success. Um, I won't test this card um, extensively in this video, I will do that in part 2 with benchmarks and I will also talk a little bit about sense and nonsense of this um, whole thing. I hope you enjoyed and I'm glad if you watched the second part.